Good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. I uh, anticipate that in our church, we are still anticipating a bit of the five-minute miracle. So we'll have a few more people come in, I'm sure, as we get rolling. Uh, we would just like to uh, share a couple of verses of Scripture as a call to worship this morning and pray, and then we'll turn it over to the worship team today. Uh, we're going to have communion as well, so after the worship and after the message from God's Word, it will dovetail very easily into communion, so we'll have communion at the end of the service. So uh, once you hear me start speaking, you'll say, he forgot communion. No, no, he did not. Uh, we're just going to do it at, at the end today. So that being said, Don, I'd like to read a few verses from Psalm 108. The Bible says, My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake, harp, and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. And I say, yes, amen, that be so by the Spirit of God today. In your name, Jesus, amen. So, join with us as we, as we exalt him and lift him up and magnify his name this morning. This is a, this is a time that we're blessed, I mean, we have that we can come together and do this and enjoy each other's company and enjoy each other's voices. And wish Olivia a happy birthday. Oh yeah, and wish Olivia a happy birthday. Yeah. And blessings on her. It's an annual thing, she says, but she doesn't realize that this is the year. This is the year of promises and dreams coming true. So, we bless her. All right, Lord, we lift you up. Turn our eyes on you this morning. Turn our hearts towards you, God. You're the God that we worship and serve. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end.
of the army it's like we're an army and it's kind of like you start singing and you start praising and it's kind of builds and pretty soon you're like all united and unified and 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 just overpowering the enemy you know so yes lord we overcome evil yeah. with good yeah. let your love and your kindness and your goodness flow out of all of us your compassion your mercy yes
Lord of Lords. Seated at the right hand of the Father with all authority and power. Jesus. I don't know how many times I prayed Jesus, you know, in your name. And, and, and I mean, we've seen so many things, so many. <laughs> ah, 
you know, it's funny. You almost take it for granted after a while, the hand of God in your life. Because you just like, oh, this is the normal. He just makes a way where there is no way. He brings the way out where I couldn't see it. He, he goes above and beyond what you expected. He protects you, and, and you kind of think, oh, it's the norm. But really, it's the hand of God. It's in, there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in being a child of, of the living God. And so, uh, you know, sometimes we don't recognize that, but we can, we can really look, and you start looking back and seeing the miracles and the signs and wonders that the Lord has done in your life. Um, so this next song is miracles, and, and it's, just, it's just seeing those and recognizing that the, that the Lord is at work. He's a supernatural God, and he does supernatural things through us and in us. The one who made the blind to see is moving here in front of me, moving here in front of me. The one who made the deaf to hear is silencing my every fear, silencing my every fear. The one, the one who made the blind to see is moving here in front of me, moving here.
Yes, Lord, you are the God of miracles. We believe that. We believe that today. And so, Lord, today, no matter what the circumstances may look like in your life today, believe in the God of miracles. Yeah. Right now, in the name of the Lord, I choose to believe. I choose not to be moved by my alone, by my emotions, or by what I am sensing physically. I choose to exercise my sixth sense my sense of faith and I choose to believe you are the God of miracles Lord God praise your mighty name and as we sang earlier all we got to do is breathe the name of Jesus so we breathe your name we breathe your name into every situation in the name of Jesus we breathe Jesus into that hallelujah we see your kingdom released in Jesus name we choose to believe thank you Lord thank you praise God uh, just keep playing there for a sec I just want to give an opportunity uh, does somebody have a word this morning you know so sometimes it's nice just to have a minstrel you know right not right for us so we'll just give it a sec you know and uh, and somebody had a word for us we want to hear that word praise God you know, you don't have to wait till you get an invite me at the end. Uh, if I'm sitting there service leading or whoever, you know, you just come up and we'll smile at you and be so excited that you're sensing something and help you discern what God's saying, you know? And we want to hear what God has to say. You know, sometimes it's a prophetic word. Sometimes that word will come through a verse or through a thought. And we welcome that this morning. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. had a verse come to mind um, blessed are you when you're persecuted for righteous righteousness you know great is great is your reward that 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 will be coming you know mm -hmm. and and when we break down blessed um, blessed is happy fortunate to be envied you know so if you're going through it right now you know if you feel mocked for walking in certain paths and you know, taking your life in, in a way that is set apart. If you feel mocked, if you feel persecuted, if you feel really judged, just know that you do have a reward coming, if not in this life, in the one, in the one to come. Yes, thanks for that. We receive that. We believe that. We thank you for that, Lord, today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Well, thank you, team, so much for leading worship helping us to just make it a little easier for us to touch the Lord and sense his presence. So God bless you for taking us in. So I have a few uh, announcements to share with you this morning, so I'd like to just take a few minutes to do that before we uh, go any further. Nice to see Trevor back on the base there. It's fun. Um, Margaret and I are going to be away next weekend. 
uh, will be up in Kelowna. Uh, as all of you know, uh, my father passed away on August the 3rd, beginning of August, about a month ago. So we thought we'd wait till the forest fires kind of start to kind of hopefully come down at least all the smoke up in the Kelowna area. And anyway, we're, so we're going to do it next week. We're getting together as a family uh, up in Kelowna. And so on Sunday morning, I will be uh, with my family uh, out by uh, a body of water out in that Kelowna area, and we're going to uh, spread Dad's ashes and just have a little service together. So uh, anyway, um, don't know if I could say I'm looking forward to it, but I know it's important. It's part of closure and it's a part of connection and just being together with those you love, you know. It's like yesterday, uh, Bob and I were talking about it and I felt better just talking to a family member, you know. So there's something about that connection that, that helps as we have a common faith and as we think of where Dad is today. I'm so thankful that he has, uh, that he's with the Lord. He has uh, changed his address. I don't get to talk to him whenever I want to now, that day will come again, but, but he's with the Lord, and I'm thankful about that. So anyway, I'll be away next weekend, and Russ is going to be bringing the word. So thanks, Russ, for that. Let's uh, remember Russ in prayer, right, that the Lord will guide him and direct him, right? <laughs> we all need that, right? I can use it, and so, so I, I know Russ can, so anytime somebody's speaking, so pray for Russ this week that uh, the Lord will guide him. I know he'll have a word for us for next uh, Sunday morning. Look forward to that. Uh, Children's Church, uh, we plan on starting on the 19th of uh, September. Normally, we would start the week after Labor Day, but because Margaret and I are going to be away, we thought we'd wait an extra week, so it'll be the 19th. I'd just like you to know that we still are in need of a teacher. If we're going to run the full children's program without interruptions, we have to have a certain amount of teachers. If we don't get those level of teachers, there'll be some holes, and there'll be some Sundays we will not have Children's Church. Uh, so I'm just telling you that up front. So, so we, could, we need another teacher. We've got several helpers. We've got a couple of teachers, but we need another teacher to make that work. So uh, think about that, and uh, you can talk to Margaret. She'd be glad to discuss that. Or uh, if you're curious and you just have a question uh, about it, she'll be glad to answer that. The, the idea is to have about three teams. That way uh, no one has to be down there every week, but perhaps once every three weeks or so that their turn would come up. So, so that's the, uh, the thought there. Um, water baptism, September the 19th. Very excited. We now have six people that are being baptized in water on the 19th of September. I am so stoked about that. So September the 19th, that's going to be a phenomenal service. It's wonderful when people get up, children, teenagers, and adults, and say, I have accepted the Lord, and I want everybody to know it, and I'm doing this for you, Jesus. It's just something very, very wonderful about that. So we're excited about it. Some have waited for several months, and they're still been waiting because of COVID, right? We we're going to do this several months ago. So I'm praying on that day. That day will just be really blessed and anointed by the Lord touched by his presence as we baptize them in water. I uh, wanted to also just briefly mention uh, that we will be offering uh, the marriage course. This will be starting in October. Uh, there is a real need, I believe, to encourage marriages and strengthen the connections between married couples, both in our church and in our community. And so sensing that and feeling that, we're offering a course on that. I uh, encourage you to consider attending. Uh, it's for those that feel their marriages are strong, uh, that would just like a few more tips. It is for those that feel their marriages maybe aren't as strong, and they would like a few tips. It really isn't a matter of one or the other. All of us can improve and be stronger within our relationships with our spouse. We always can, right? And so that's coming up, so I'm very excited about that. It's going to begin on Sunday, October the 17th in the evening, 6 o'clock, and it'll run for seven weeks. And the format of the marriage course, I sent out an email to the church about it. The format is that each night, all those that have pre-registered, that have, that have registered with me, uh, will be seated. They'll come in and they'll be seated at their own table. So every couple will sit at their own 
table with some space and distance between them and other couples. So you'll have some privacy in a date night kind of an atmosphere. And Kate is all over this. She's going to help us with this to make it look nice. You don't want me trying to make it nice. It won't. It'll, it'll, but, but Kate knows how to do this stuff. So it's going to be really, really nice. It's going to take place in the sanctuary upstairs. And we have room for about a dozen people, perhaps a baker's dozen. There'll be a community table, so those that come will be asking to bring an appetizer or a dessert for the community table. And then uh, couples will be invited to just go back to their own table with some food and just spend a little time together, connecting and just being together. And then we'll have a video, and uh, there'll be opportunity within that video for them to have a little talk with each other a couple of times during each video. So it's really good. I'm really excited about the, the videos, the presenters. They've done this. They've done this for quite a few years now, and uh, they're approaching 2 million people that have taken the course, 1.7 million. It's been in 127 countries. They are just absolutely phenomenal. They've just updated all their material. You're going to love it. So if you're interested or curious, please talk to me or Margaret. I've been talking to some people in the community that don't go to our church, and they are just so thankful to be invited. So I think we'll get some people that are outside the church family as well. So those are the announcements for this morning and the things that uh, I felt to uh, share with you today. All right? So, uh, we're going to pray for God's Word today, and I could use some help in that area. Uh, I wonder if someone would feel willing to come up and pray for this guy. He could sure use all the prayer he could get. So, who will come up and pray for me? Dan, thanks. Make sure we got you online here. No problem. Can I get you to stand with me, please? Put your hand on your head. Mm. Okay. You are now the most powerful person in the room. Father, we, we pray in Jesus' name, we ask in Jesus' name that as our, our hands are placed on our heads, we are praying for ourselves that your word would come forth and that we would hear and that your word would go deep into our heart. We anoint ourselves to hear. We anoint ourselves. We anoint ourselves, Lord. Yeah. Let us hear. Anoint our ears yeah. to hear. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Father, I pray for Stan. I pray that you anoint him yes, as he Lord. speaks. Anoint those words that just come yes, forth. Lord. Let them be anointed. Let them come out. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, Dan. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I'll tell you, the Lord answers prayer, right? So as we pray together, the Holy Spirit will move and speak into our hearts and our lives. I really, really believe that. It is a joy to bring God's Word after we uh, look at the message from, from God's Word today, we'll be having communion, and I really sense that um, the message flowed really well with having communion afterwards, as you'll soon see as we get into God's Word this morning. So, uh, hope you've been enjoying your long weekend, uh, Labor Day weekend. It is September again. What happened, bud? Yeah, September, wow, amazing. So, uh, I don't quite feel it speaking yet. So, I, I got, we got to have our grandkids up a couple of times this summer. Isn't that something? I have four grandchildren, Cheryl. <laughs> so, it was cool, they came up in July, and then they came up again in August to be with us for a few days, so that was fun, and then we took them back to Vancouver and uh, hung out with uh, our daughters and son-in-laws, and uh, one of my son-in-laws, Matt, they live downtown Vancouver, Matt and Catherine, and uh, he was saying, I haven't seen you for a long time. We got thinking about it, it was two and a half years since I've seen him, two and a half years, you know, with COVID and everything. Anyway... He was so happy to see us, maybe to see Margaret, but I think to see me too. 
<clears throat> that he took us out for a really nice meal, and I got this wonderful steak. I, uh, I was telling Dan Jorgensen about it. It was just so wonderful. And he told me not to look at the price and just get the steak I liked. And uh, so I was going to get a different one than I liked. And he said, I know which one you want. You know, right? And, and anyways, it was lovely. And we got to hang out with them and go over and see their condo where they live and so forth. It was just great. So I'm thankful for family and the opportunity to connect with them over the summer. All right. I feel a little more like it now. So, so I want to talk to you about the Word. And... Uh, the thought that I had on my heart that I wanted to share with you this morning is, is about understanding uh, the need of us as Christians to understand what our wake is. Understanding your wake, W-A-K-E, our wake. Uh, what are you talking about? Well, let me tell you a story. Stories help. So I, I've told this story before, but then I'm speaking, so I get to tell the stories I like. And in this particular time... Uh, we used to, every year when I went to the Victoria Church, uh, Mike and Kathy Cormack would invite us out to Seanigan Lake, the youth group. And so we would go out to the youth group uh, there, and uh, Mike had a boat, small power boat, and uh, we'd take the kids all out tubing. We'd take one or two tubes, tie them onto the back of the boat, and run them around in, in the lake and so forth. And then we'd have a barbecue and all that. And it was great fun. And their house, uh, the, the Cormac's family's house, was, was right, on, right, on the, right on the lake. And, uh, and so it was really lovely. So the kids just loved it. We'd go out there and do that. And so some people would be out in the lake and others would be waiting. They'd be, you know, on the, the floating dock. Uh, at other seasons and times, you'd see some individuals that they were good friends would come out. And some people would just sit on the dock. Some people would sunbathe. Some people would be boating. And all that sort of thing would take place. But the interesting thing and the reason that I tell that story is that Mike would occasionally talk to me about, about how some people didn't get it in their boats and, and did not practice safety when they were taking their boats by. Most people did, but he said there's this odd person that would have a, a pretty powerful boat and would be going too fast and too close to the area of the docks where the homes were, you know, because you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that because, of course, as soon as you do that, you create waves and then the floating docks start moving and he says it causes damage to the boats because the boats are knocking against each other. Uh, other times it just causes plain annoyance when people are just trying to have a good time enjoying the sunshine. Uh, and other times it just it can scare kids, right, scare children and so forth. And, not, and people that aren't kids, it just, it's just not a good thing to do. Uh, on occasion, I've seen people that were trying to soak up the sun get soaked because, uh, because a big wave came in and just went skloosk all over them, right? So for those reasons, uh, it's good for the boats to stay out in the deeper water and a fair distance away from, from where, where, the, where the docks are. The point, I suppose, is to mention is that the boats caused a wake and they weren't aware of their wake and the effect that those waves and the ripples, if you will, more than ripples, a wake would have. And every boat has a wake, right? And the bigger the boat and the faster they're going, the more their wake is. So I want to talk to you today about understanding what your wake is because we all have a wake. Awake is an emotional or a spiritual aspect in our life where, where what we are and who we are is remembered after I am gone. The, it is the aftertaste or hopefully the afterglow of me being in your life. But we all have a wake. It is the ripples that affect people. And it affects your words, and it affects your testimony. Uh, your wake can imprint on every interaction and affect the relationships that you have with people far into the future. That's what a wake is. And so, a deeper look would be to look at this. Think about your life. 
our wake is what people say about us after we've gone. Our wake is when those... Well, look at it another way. Some people only brighten a room when they leave it. Don't be one of them. Elizabeth David, a British cookery, wrote, there are people who take the heart out of you and there are people who put it back. Be the latter. There are people who take the heart out of you and there are people who put it back. And I love to be around people that put it back. They encourage you, that lift you up. There's just something about it. And it's not so much just what they say, it's just who they are. There is this wake, there is this ripple, there is this, 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 this result of having been in their presence. So I think it's a good thing for us to ask ourselves once in a while, what's the wake like in my life? And to be honest with you, communion is a great time for that because it leads ourselves, as the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, as we'll see a little later on, to examine ourselves, right? And so sometimes we examine ourselves, but we only examine it within certain, certain areas. And we, we don't go broad enough and deep enough, recognizing we can fully Trust the fact that Jesus Christ loves us and that we are covered in his love, we are covered in his blood, we are covered by his grace, and he already knows anyway, right? And so open your heart before him and ask him those sort of things. Let him speak into your life. So it isn't a simple question as if, as if, as if, you know, because, because, because we can have different wakes with different people. We can have a very positive wave and wake with one person, but it can be not so positive with someone else. Or it can be generally pretty good unless you push my button. And then all of a sudden, there's this negative wake that becomes to manifest itself within that relationship. You know what I'm saying? And the sad thing is, is when that, that, that negative wake and waves affect people to the point of then when whenever you're wanting to share something positive it is going through that filter they've got to overcome that and work through it some people do really do really well with that other people not so much right it's true let's look at the bible second corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 second corinthians chapter 2 And the 14th verse, 2 Corinthians 2, 14. But thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ, and through us spreads everywhere, everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. For we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being so saved and those who are perishing. What a great verse. You know, when Paul wrote that, within the culture of the day, one of the things that the people were aware of was what was known as the, the Roman triumphant procession. And the Romans, what they would do is they would have, if, if, if when one of their generals conquered another people or another group, they would parade through the streets of Rome honoring the conquering general. And in the procession, they had incense burning as well as they marched down to the temple of Jupiter. And in that, there was this whole thing of triumph as the general was honored and the soldiers were honored and as the slaves were in bondage, that they had been captured by Rome. And as we think about that, it, it, it's an interesting that he's not referring to that directly, but that is something that would get traction in their minds because they were aware of that. They knew that terminology. They understood that. 
And so we are Christ's captives. We are not enslaved to poverty, but we are love slaves of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Christ, we triumph. We triumph over our flaws and we triumph over our weaknesses. Because you see, in the verses before that, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul was just talking about, he says, I still do not have peace of mind. Now this is the mighty apostle Paul. You know, I don't have peace of mind right now, he says. I know the truth, I know the truth, but I'm, I'm struggling with peace of mind. What, what was that all about? Well, if you look at it in the 13th verse, you know, we pluck these verses out sometimes, we don't look at the context. But in it, he's saying, he says, I didn't find my brother Titus there, he says. So I said goodbye to them and I went on to Macedonia. Isn't that interesting? He was looking for Titus and he wasn't there. You have somebody really important in your relationship or that season of your life, right? And you're looking for them and he couldn't find them. He, so he didn't have peace of mind. I, I don't know what that was all about, you know? But I don't need to know what that's all about. Because I know what my life and I know what your life's a little bit about. And stuff like that can take peace from us. But isn't it interesting? But he says, even though I don't have peace of mind, he goes on and says, but thanks be to God who always leaves us in triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. What is he saying? He says, in Christ, the triumphant reality of who Jesus Christ moves and touches people, and there's this aroma upon me of Jesus Christ, even though I am not fully functioning in the reality of experiencing the peace of God because I'm a little troubled about Titus right now. Isn't that interesting? And the incense that flows from our lives triumphs over our weaknesses and over our flaws. It says in 2 Corinthians 2.14 in the Passion Translation, there's a few words that are quite intriguing to me, when it says this, through our yielded lives, he spreads the fragrance. And so when we think about the fact that, you see, we are captives of the Lord, spreading the fragrance of the Lord, because we love the Lord. And that's where the difference is so different than the triumphant thing of the Romans, and where it launches different. He says, through our yielded lives, he spreads the fragrance. And Paul had a yielded life. Paul was a man who in his strengths and in his weaknesses recognized that the Spirit of the Lord was in him and that the Lord could triumph through him warts and all. And God can triumph and be seen in you warts and all. Nobody I know has got a perfect wake other than Jesus Christ. But that does not change the fact that we can continue to work on our wake. And as we are and God sees it and we trust in him, he will be seen in us through our flaws and through our strengths as we humbly serve him, our Lord and Savior. Doesn't that make sense? Let's look at some examples of destructive wakes because the Bible tells us that we should examine ourselves as we move forward in our lives. Our words, there's a good place to start. Our words can be destructive. It says in Proverbs chapter 12 and in the 18th verse, it says, Proverbs 12, 18 says, the words of the reckless pierce like swords. And they really do. When words are thrown out there recklessly, 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 uh, they, they can really hurt and they can just cut you deep. They really can. They really can when they're reckless. Or, 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 or when you, to look at it another way, when you deliver a message with a load. When somebody addresses you and they, and they do that with a load, that can be painful. And it is a disturbing wake 
that can overwhelm you. As much as a powerboat going by and you're resting and relaxing and at rest on the dock that is floating. And all of a sudden from a state of rest, something is just washed over you in a negative way and brought disruption. What's their examples of delivering a message with a load? Well, here's a few. There are lots. When somebody lets it know in word, by implication or directly, no, it's you. It's you. It's not me. It refuses to take any responsibility that usually it's both. Right? Or it was all in, maybe. Or maybe it was 90%. It's you, not me. Or silly things that are said like, well, it seems you've hit bottom and started to dig. Like you hit a new bottom. Or sarcasm. Or deflection. All of these things can be examples of delivering a message in a way that is condemnative, judgmental, or dark. And that's a wake that can disturb any positive testimony that we have that requires a lot more of God's grace to come into that relationship and the Spirit to move. You're giving God a lot more work that He has to do. Right? Other reasons we can have a negative wake are being motivated for some kind of personal enhancement, personal profit in our lives. It's interesting what it says in Corinthians, if you continue reading on. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and in the 17th verse, it says this. Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ, we speak before God with sincerity, like men sent from God. And so he's talking to an audience. There's been some false teachers that have come in some false prophets into Corinth. And he's, he says, like so many of them, he says, see, when I speak, Paul said, when I come to you, when I write a letter to you, when I pray for you, he said, we are not like those that come and peddle the word of God for a profit. That's not what we're about. That's not God's way. That's an indication to you that something's off here that person's off, right? And so, so he is talking about that. He's talking about, on the contrary, he says, in Christ, we speak before God. And here's the positive thing. He says, we speak before God. We, we, we come to you with sincerity. He said, he said, we are those that we recognize that we have been sent from God. And we're in your life because of God's working in our lives and this determination that we be with you. A negative weight can be the result of doing your own thing or thinking about yourself. It's like in Shawnee and Lake, focusing on that group. So you get a guy, I, I remember I've seen them, you know, powerboat go by and it'll be a group of young adults or so forth and looks like they've been drinking and some still are. And they're out there, and they're just having a blast, you know? And if you ask them how their day was when you saw them in the office the next day, they'd say, they'd say we had a great weekend, you know? And, and, and they did. They had a wonderful time. And, and their little group of a half a dozen people were so excited, they had no clue that they were making it miserable for everybody else at the lake. Because I'm good. Me and Russ were out there in the boat, you know, and him and I had a great time. You know, we're not thinking, but we're not thinking about anybody else, right? Just me and mine. Just me and mine. Doing your own thing. Thinking about yourself. Or your own goals and destination. 
and trying to get there as fast as you can. And sometimes that's a problem too. We have a negative wake because we think this has got to happen right now. And I don't care how many people i got to push over to get it done right now. Instead of recognizing, perhaps, if I take a team approach, or if I open my heart and my eyes a little bit, maybe there's some other things here. Hmm? My own goals eclipse everybody else's. My viewpoint is more important. Or we become big on ourselves. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. It's amazing how current this is. In 2 Corinthians 3, verse 1, he says, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? And he's talking about these people that have come into their lives that they've welcomed. Commending. Commending. It says in the Passion Translation, are we beginning to sound like those who speak highly of themselves? So what's he talking about? He's talking about those that the aroma of Christ is being affected and it's being diffused, it is being infiltrated by other aromas because of such things as individuals that are commending themselves, that are speaking highly of themselves, that want to be seen. So these teachers were coming in, and it was all about them getting profit, but it was also about, I want people to see me, and I am important. And did you notice me? I tell you, that smells so bad. It really stinks, and, uh, you know, it can affect you when people are like that, but it'll affect your testimony. People are pushing away because of these sort of things, but like we said with the guys, the people on Seanigan Lake running out in their boat, and they're having a good time. You talk to them the next day, and they didn't realize there's anything wrong. It's, you, be, you, be, you become, become insulated from the the damage that you're causing sometimes and you don't see it. That's why I think it's so important that the Bible says to us regularly to examine ourselves and gives an example of that with the communion and the Lord's Supper of remembering the love of the Lord, the compassion of the Lord, the forgiveness of the Lord, but also being open before the Lord and just saying, hey, Lord, have I got any spots here that, you know, is there, is there something here that, that you want to talk to me about, right? That's in it. That's part of it. Notice how positive our weight can be. And we, the more positive it is, the more life-giving it is, the more, the, 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 the more, the more powerful it will be for the Holy Ghost to move in people's lives. So, so, so you can enhance your, your weight in so many ways. So Proverbs 12 and verse 18, we read part of it earlier when I said, the words of the reckless pierce like a sword. But listen to the rest of the verse. I cut it off in the middle. You shouldn't really do that, should you? But the last half of the verse says this. It says, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. The tongue of the wise. Don't you want to be an agent of healing? The tongues of the wise bring healing. And I have experienced that, haven't you? where someone has said something and it has been like a healing bomb, you know, like, a, like a, just, a, just soothing and warmth that just has really just flowed and ministered to me and the Spirit of God has picked that up and touched me in a deep way. Look at Jesus, of course, the ultimate as far as positive wake if we look into his life. Listen to him. It says, it says to him in the Gospels, it says of him, it says, no one ever spoke like him talking about how positive he was. Uh, it, if you follow his life, it was more than his words, though. It was, there was this, this reality of God that was all over him, right? So real, and yet such reality of the living God upon him. There was, he was an agent of hope. He brought hope to people. He brought healing, comfort, uh, encouragement. Within the reality of he also through that reality, challenged people into joining him in the adventure of their life with him before God, but all in a very positive way. So amazing. And so you can enhance your positive wake. Look at Jesus. Speak with intention, words of purpose to others around you. Work at it. Express value. 
It says in 1 Peter 3, verse 15, always be prepared. 1 Peter 3, 15, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Do this with gentleness and respect. God says, that's my way. That's my way. That's my way. Express value. Respect. That can be so simple as just recognizing a job well done or letting someone know you care about them, or appreciating their effort, right? We can practice that stuff here, right? Church is a great place to practice the good stuff, right? We're talking about if you have a word for the Lord. What a great place to learn if you got a word from the Lord. You come up, you know, so Cheryl's leading, work, leading service, and, and sometimes, and so, she, and so you're, you're not sure, right? You know, but you come up and you say, sure, oh, I'm just, God's all over me. I just think I got something. And, you know, right? And she, so she, she prays with you. She looks you in the eye and says, you know, I, I really think you do. And, oh, I, I really, you know, you know, in that right. And, 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 and so what happens? They're discerning more, you're discerning more of the voice of God. What a great place to practice and learn so that, so that when you're out there with people and you're feeling something on your heart, your confidence is growing to share that but in a positive week, the positive aroma, right? Interesting that Paul went on and he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, he said that he recognized that he was sent and he yielded his life to the Lord. It says that in there, and that enhanced his aroma, the fragrance of the Lord in his life, right? And that helps us to just to recognize that. You know, here I'm on mission. Jesus is in my life. So I'm talking about this morning before we have communion about the importance of practicing a little self-evaluation from time to time. And uh, uh, you say, I wish I had a more positive message. Well, it is positive. If you do this, it'll lead to freedom. It really will. And so these are things we need to remember that the Scripture talks about. Sometimes we see our positive effects but they can be eclipsed because of the negative if we're not examining ourselves and just being aware how we're affecting others around us. Psalm 26, verse 2 and 3 says this in Psalm 26, verse 2. I'm reading it in the New King James Version. Psalm 26, verse 2. And David said this, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. For your loving kindness is before my eyes. Now, isn't that beautifully balanced? I really think it is. And so as we have communion in a few minutes, think about that principle. David said, examine me, O Lord. Prove me, test me, huh? reveal to me where I'm at. Try my mind and my heart, O God. And then, but, but isn't it interesting how he finishes it off, his sentence there, he says, for your loving, loving kindness is before my eyes. Always keep the loving kindness of the Lord before your eyes as you ask him, right? Keep that before you because that'll make you feel secure, right? 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 And safe. Because that's who God is. He wants you to feel safe. He wants you to feel safe. In him, and you can feel safe in him as you let him talk to you, right? Let your guard down. You can be safe. What? His loving kindness. That's what he said. Isn't that so cool? And so during the Lord's Supper, it says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, verse 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup, right? That's what we're talking about. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, another verse of Scripture. Paul said this, test yourselves, 2 Corinthians 3, 13, verse 5. I'm going to read it in the message. Why do I read all these different translations? I just need to because 
You know, I find in my mind, if I, if I hear it always the same way, sometimes my mind goes over it a little bit, you know? And, and so if I hear it in different translations, sometimes it kind of helps me, right? To kind of get it. So in the message, it says this in, in, about examining yourself in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. It's kind of cool. It says, test yourselves to make sure you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. That's pretty good, eh? Test yourselves to make sure you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. And we can do that as remember his loving kindness. Because why? He wants to get the gunk all out of us so that the oil of the Holy Ghost flows through us as instruments into our world and into our lives. It's not all about using us, right? He wants you to be genuinely free in your life. That's really what it's about, right? He doesn't want just to use you. Loving kindness as he loves you. He wants you to be free. He wants you to experience him and all that he is. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. You know, recognize that everything you say creates one form of awake or another. And not just what you say, but the way you act and in your life. So let's just be aware. Work on your own stuff. Don't work on somebody else's stuff. Right? Work on your own stuff. Pray about your weight. Let's do that this morning and your fragrance. That more of the fragrance of the Holy Spirit will flow in you and through you into the lives of those around you and flow freely, allowing God to speak deeply into your spirit and into your heart. You smell and feel the fragrance of heaven more and more on you. Can we do that? Sure we can. So Lord, as we move into communion this morning and we choose to examine ourselves, but we choose to examine ourselves within the recognition as David did, Lord, for your loving kindness is before my eyes. And so Lord, as we have communion, Lord, help us to remember to examine our hearts, but also Lord, help us as we think about your blood as we think about the death of your body, your, 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 the body and blood of the Lord, to think about how much you really love us, that we're safe. We're safe in your arms. It's just you I'm talking to, Jesus. No one else is listening. And so, Lord, remind us of those things this morning, and may that revelation touch us. In the name of the Lord, thank you, Father. And so uh, let's uh, distribute the, uh, the emblems today, if we could, and and if you're at home, I, I did send a post out yesterday, and I don't know if some of you saw it or not. Hopefully some of you did. So if you have some juice at home, a piece of bread, that'll suffice, right? And if you don't, just get some, some kind of a refreshment, something, and, and some bread or a cracker just beside yourself. And you, the Spirit of God is with you, whether you're at home watching us or you're here with us this morning. You're able to have communion. It's a spirit thing, right? So our spirits are united with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and he can impact you as well as we have communion. So, so find some bread, some juice, even as we're distributing this morning. And I invite you to touch the Lord today as we bring these around. And then we'll pray together before we have communion. And after we've had communion, we'll get uh, uh, perhaps Murray to shut off the stream after communion, uh, the live stream, and, uh, and then we'll invite anyone who would like prayer. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, we'll be glad to pray with anyone who would like prayer. And there's something very profound about praying for each other, you know, right? And sharing our, ourselves with another, right? So we'll do that shortly. So Paul talked about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he talked about how he received from the Lord. And I've passed it on to you what I received of the Lord. That's what he's saying, right? He said, I wasn't, Paul, Paul's basically saying, you know, I, I didn't have the honor and the joy and the blessing of being in the upper room with Jesus, you know, with the 12. I wasn't there. 
But you know what? The Holy Spirit told me. I mean, I heard the stories, but the Holy Spirit made it real to me. That's what he's saying, right? And so here we are, a couple of millennium later. And just like he made it real to Paul, he's made it real to you. And may he make it real to you again, right? As you think about the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just peel back the first layer. So that shows the bread. Let's get that out today. If you're in the building with me today. And so this wafer speaks of the body of Jesus. And he was broken for you. Listen, I've been talking about brokenness this morning and, and our wakes and, and the brokenness that, that we know we have. I've talked about examining your heart. And when you examine your heart, sometimes the Holy Spirit within his loving kindness will say, well, that, there's that area of brokenness. You know, I've been talking to you about it. Or maybe you don't know, but that's okay. I want you to know, and I want you to remember what you already know. See, see, he was broken. He was broken on the cross. He allowed himself to be broken so that you and your brokenness can be healed. Isn't that beautiful? That's Jesus. So, Lord, as we hold, hold this bread in our hands, we, remem we remember that you were broken. You heal my brokenness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. By your stripes, there's healing today. So I open my heart to you today, and I open my mind before you today. And I admit my brokenness, and I thank you for your broken body that would heal me today, this moment. Let's take the bread. Bless you. Lord, as we eat, we ingest the life-giving sustenance of your revelation and of your word and of your spirit today. We digest your love. We savor your love. Thank you, Lord, for breaking yourself that we might be healed of our brokenness. Now we have the cup. Thank God for the blood of Jesus, huh? Thank God for the blood of Jesus, eh, everyone? Amen? Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Just thank him now. Thank you, Lord, for sharing your life, your blood. Thank you there's forgiveness at the cross. But when we say that, Lord, we don't mean forgiveness just 2,000 years ago, there's, because of the cross, there's forgiveness this second, this moment, at this time. We are forgiven when we accepted you, but our feet get dirty sometimes, Lord, and you will wash that off this second as we just remember the blood of Jesus Christ. So again, I say to you, within that recognition of the love of Jesus Christ, when you're aware of any area of brokenness within your life or area where your wake has been damaged, own that. Own it in the sense of bring it. Own it, don't keep it. You know what I'm saying? You're bringing it to the cross. You don't own it. Bring it to the cross. But you're, but you're, but you're aware and you're confessing that to him. You know what I'm saying? Let the Spirit make that real. You're letting it go in his presence. And, and his blood is washed. You're washed in his blood. You're washed in his love. You're washed in his loving kindness. He's healing you. He's freeing you this morning. Yeah. So, Lord, as we take the cup in just a moment, we're not yet, but Lord, as we take, we pray for the revelation again and the reality that you have forgiven us to touch our hearts yet again. In the name of the Lord, we receive your love. Baptize us in your love again. Amen. Let's partake. So I'm going to pray for those that are at home and here before we shut off the live stream. And I just pray for you today. May you experience the love and the life of Jesus. I encourage you today, if you're with your spouse or a family member, a number member and you're watching this at home, that you would just, when we go off camera, you would just take a moment and pray with each other. 
however that apl this applies to you and to each other. Will you do that? And if you're by yourself, that's okay. Jesus is in the room. The Holy Spirit is in the room. So just have a moment with Jesus and let him minister to your heart. So I pray for you that you would be free, that you would be healed. And thank you for your love and your loving kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. If you would, Mary, just shut it off. I would like to, I, I do this.